What's up guys, Joe Cunningham from USA Drains. And if you're logged onto this channel, you probably wanna get some hints and tips on what it takes to install septic systems. If you wanna open up your own business, I'm gonna show you a few pieces of equipment that you're gonna need. Uh, you can start off by buying just one, but you're gonna need both of these machines soon. Okay? And that's an excavator and the track loader with tracks. Do not buy a machine that has tires. You'll realize really quickly that that was a very bad investment. Okay, you need tracks on your equipment. Do not buy a sissy with tires if you're going to be doing septics. And the reason you need both of these machines is because, one, you don't know if the septic's going to take you two days or six. So now you're stuck with machines that you're renting. And it's just going to cost you so much money, you're not going to make any money on the goddamn jobs. Number two, <clears throat> one of the biggest problems you're going to have on a septic site is soil management. Picking soil up, putting it down, and it being in your way. You have to be able to actually move the dirt from where you dig it from, okay? And you're also going to want to separate it too. Like you see this right here? This is topsoil. This is the dirt on the top layer. We separate this from the dirt in the, in the, in the ground, and the reason why you do that is because one of the biggest expenses you're going to have on a septic job isn't going to be the stone, it ain't going to be the tank, it's going to be the cleanup. It's going to be making somebody's yard look like, look somewhat nice. Because, look at this. I mean, just look at this. You can't rake that. You can't rake this. And if you put this down on top, when you're done, you can't rake this either. So when the job is all finished up and you bury all the bad stuff in the dirt, that's how you fill your holes. Then you come back with the topsoil, your stuff that you pull off the top layer, and you use that to, uh, to cover the ground. So you can rake it and make it look decent. See, we actually do a good job separating it. We actually have, I have a pile out by the road. I don't even want it on my job site. When we're all done with this job, we will come by and scoop it from here and spread it out over there. And you need to, and you're gonna need a track loader to do that. You can't do that with an excavator. It'll take you way too long. I mean, you can do it, but it'll just take you forever. This machine moves hell of a lot quicker than this one. It is worth the investment. I bought both of these brand new. First, I bought this one. It was 60,000. And this one, I think, was 70,000. Okay? And this is the cheaper model, too. This is only the 65. You could drop 100,000 on one of these. This is the smallest one. One of the reasons why is because my dump truck can't pull something. That's 10,000 pounds. My dump truck can't really pull anything heavier than that. Things are already on. Things are already pulling, you know. But, um,. You know, we dig the we, we dig the um, the dirt out around this galley. We're replacing the stone so that the system works. Um, and, and and I would say at the minimum, U thirty five dash four. That's minimum Kubota. Minimum. That even my machine is small. Now there's a video online of a guy. I'm sure you've seen if you're into this. He's comparing. Um, he's at like a like an excavator yard, a machine yard, and he's comparing. Um, um, machines with each other. The Kubota was one of them, the cat, the case, maybe there was the case, and then there was a, uh, a Yanmar, right? And, and he picked up a, a concrete block and um, just making a sales pitch to you. Smart guy, I'm not guessing, but he's trying to tell you the Yanmar is a lot stronger than the Kubota. Let me tell you something, buddy. Not even the Yanmar that he was using is good for moving around 5,000 pound mafia blocks. Okay, that, that, you swing that thing a little bit over to the side, that machine's going over. That's the wrong machine for that job. A terrible comparison. Okay, these machines are all strong. They're all good. The amount that they can lift is minimum. The difference between the sizes, it's, it's, it's tiny. You have 100 pounds here, 200 pounds there. Dude, you'll, 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 you'll put 100 pounds in a rock and, and you know, a, a square, one square foot. You know what I mean? It's nothing. You, you run into those... You run into overweight problems um, 
no matter what kind of sm small mini excavator you have on a job site. If you have the equipment to pull heavy stuff, buy a bigger excavator. Buy a bigger excavator, believe me. This machine can't swing into the back of a 20 yard dump truck. It's not tall enough. The minimum size you need to swing into the back of a 20 yard dump truck is an 18,000 pound excavator. They usually have the arms that are tall enough. And even there, they can be challenging. Um, so that's it. These are the machines that you need. Um, you know, separate your dirt, separate your dirt. Otherwise you're gonna be buying topsoil, okay? Because the customer's gonna say, what is this shit? He goes, I'm not gonna pay. You know, he, I, he goes, you, you need to make my yard look good. And you're gonna have to go out and you're gonna have to buy topsoil. And it's gonna cost you a hell of a lot of money to truck that shit in, spread that shit out. You got topsoil on your job site already. Don't go buying topsoil, you don't need it. You have it on your job site. But you need soil management and it's one of the biggest problems you're gonna have when you're doing septic systems. All right, guys, so God bless you. Good luck and make money because there's a shitload of money to make in this business. But whoo, yeah, taking a trip. See you later, you guys. Peace.